Um, yeah, it, it wasn't quite the, the day that we planned, um, but it is great to have Nick and Alexi um, at least uh, here back on the ground again. Um, anytime you can get a crew safely home, uh, you feel very good about about uh, what what you've accomplished that particular day. The fact this crew didn't get to orbit, uh, yeah, we feel bad for them, but uh, we have every confidence that uh, that, that uh, our Russian colleagues will figure out what's going on, and uh, and and we'll uh, hopefully see Nick and Alexei uh, on orbit and at the space station again soon. Um, as most of you know, the, the plan was to launch it uh, at 3.40 a.m. Houston time this morning. Uh, about two minutes into launch, um, there was an off-nominal signature uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the actual Soyuz, and uh, the second stage uh, booster had an issue at that point. Uh, per the standard procedure, an abort was initiated, and uh, uh, the crew uh, descent module uh, was removed from the stack. And, uh, and uh, at that point, it entered a, what, you, what you call a ballistic uh, landing uh, trajectory. And, and, uh, and about 34 minutes after, after that abort was declared, the crew uh, touched down safely in, uh, in uh, um, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, a short ways from Jezkazgan, a city uh, where we stage out of when we go to uh, nominally uh, return to cruise uh, after a nominal landing. So uh, I'd say the first thing that I want to really stress overall is that this is, in my opinion, a good news story. Uh, as Kenny mentioned, the crew is already back on the ground in Baikonur. They've been reunited with their families. Uh, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine is there. He's been meeting with the crew. Um, and so certainly from the crew perspective, we're well trained for an abort. We never anticipate one, but we kind of expect one. And our procedures walk us through each phase of the ascent and which abort regime we'll be in. Uh, so uh, you're ready at all times for that abort. Today's abort was automatically initiated by the vehicle. So from a crew perspective, certainly there is a bit of shock in there for a moment, but the communication with the crew was extremely professional. They had a brief moment of weightlessness, uh, and then uh, G-forces built up, parachute came out, and they landed in Jezka's gun, which we're actually quite familiar with, as Kenny said, because that's a standard recovery site for our astronauts and cosmonauts when they come back. So um, overall, it's just it, it's great to see how the Soyuz handled this emergency, how the crew handled this emergency, and got uh, our cosmonaut and our astronaut back safely. In an abort, you want to get them back in the safest mode possible. And for the Soyuz, a ballistic mode is the safest mode. And all that really means is it's like uh, shooting a bullet out of a rifle barrel. It starts slowly spinning the descent module so that it has aerodynamic stability as it comes back through the thicker parts of the atmosphere. And then the parachute comes out and they land. So the crew would have experienced just a fairly benign amount of rotation, about six to seven times Earth's gravity, which is not insignificant. Uh, but uh, from everything that we have seen, the crew's in great shape. They're in Baikonur, and they're healthy. Uh, all, of our, all of our folks there have, have already been talking to them, and they look real good. Sure, I, I think it, it just reemphasizes that this is a dangerous business. Uh, I think it also really solidifies, in my mind, that the Soyuz is a robust, redundant, reliable machine. It has a lot of flights under its belt. And in this case, where it had an ascent anomaly, it has a great abort system that brought our crew home safely. So it just underscores to me that, uh, that it's a good system, it's a reliable system. And uh, I, I remain to have complete confidence in, in the Russians and, and the quality of their work.